the real origin, the real seed of the tree, inverted rotten tree of life of all pathology, goes further back to a thing that I describe as the antipathy to nature. And it's born out of the trauma. When nature erupted around our forebearers, nature that was, relatively speaking, not that other cataclysms hadn't happened in the past, but for long tracks of time, people grew to respect nature, as we know our ancestors did. But when the titanic upheavals happened, obviously one of the after effects of that was a great and deep suspicion of nature itself. A breach had taken place. One can even read it in the fall of the Edenic, from the Edenic plane. That Mother Nature now had a dark side and was terribly threatening. Women have a play, part to play in that by the forgiveness, right? They need to start admiring men as opposed to envying. But in, in the whole, in short, women are under attack because women are the solution. The sisterhood knows what I'm just said. The sisterhood knows women are the only one to fear here. Mm. So that's why they are under more attack even than men. This is what women have to understand. You are the ones who are under attack. Your psyche, your daughters are all more under attack because they know you carry the real key of salvation to the whole human race. So they're going to work on you more. And that's in a multiplicity of ways and it's a learning curve to get to know how they're doing it through the estrogen, through the, the cesarean sections, through the loveless births that they're forcing you to have, yeah. through the whole medicalization of the human race through memes that are demeaning men so that will awaken more of the your your if they can awaken this envy and hatred of man then the woman becomes like they are isn't it that's identification yeah. an ordinary woman goes i actually really want to come down i got no reason to hate men why do i hate them because you've been entrained by the media and that makes you align with their side now not only that but there's other things that are making you lose will collectivism see women discovered in the pre in this nursery period one of the beneficial things against the world against animals and against you know, evil men. Women discovered that the collective, when they when they collectivize amongst themselves, they originally did it because of menstruation and other things. It was just a synchro synchronization of the menstrual period. But an added a, an added bonus that came from that was the strength in numbers. It was the first instance. Men are strong individually, right? That's where their individual power is. But women realized, you know, if we get together uh, in a strong way. You know, it's through this collectivism that we make decisions, that we protect the tribe, and that we're even, you know, we strengthen ourselves where we're not strong individually. So today, the constant means of communitarianism, collectivism, is aimed again at the woman, not the man. The man is, is instinctively resistant to collectivization. And some women are, right? Otherwise, we wouldn't have had an Ayn Rand, would we? But the main message of, to the woman is collectivize, collectivize. Therein lies your strength. Global village, there lies in your strength. Remember, I said another work about the not only the panopticonization, but this whole symbolism of the mother that they're using when they even give you pictures of this uh, panopticon to come. When they're when they're giving you the image of the global village, it's in a very female, one-click push-button, air-conditioned, you know, safe, motherly image. Aphrodite is, is symbols are used a lot. Mm. All mother symbolism used when they sell you this image of the perfect, uh, you know, hive in which we're all meant to be, to be living. So I'm not worried about the uh, you know pain and suffering involved in that process because we're at the early stages yet of not only the healing, but of introducing new ideas. Whenever you're dealing with a traumatized victim, 
you can't even introduce one new idea. That's right. Without major spoon feeding, and without major you know, sugar coating of it, right? So we are in the early stages in this movement we would call conspiracy movement or alternative research movement. So all the voices, all the bullshit, all the little sodden rats that crawl out to you know, defame and, and scoff, that's just, that's just what you expect. We're in the, such the early stages of taking off this uh, lid. You know, and we're coming aware. Now, Alex Jones has to have one bullhorn after the other. Of course he does. Of course he does, because there's resistance. But he has his way, right, of bashing it into your head. I've got mine, and it's very frustrating. But we are in the early stages of, of, of even, uh, you know, in, coming out of this nursery infantile level where we can get the grips with some of this. And the strange thing is that unless you're an authority figure, see, this is how the mind works. I won't accept what you're saying. Michael, where's your PhD? You need to be wearing a suit and tie. You need to have your, your hair short. You need to be standing on a, on a, a you know, where's, your, where's, where's the university behind you? Where's all that shit? I won't believe you talking about anti-authority unless you're an authority figure. Exactly. <laughs> it's so true how programmed, how programmed we are. There's no PhD on your book that I can find. Where's your credentials? I'm not listening to the content. I'm wanting it with the messenger. I don't like your photograph. You've got missing teeth. What's that gold cap doing? What's that earring doing? What's that tattoo doing? Right? Uh, forget, forget that, just read the shit, right? No, 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 no. You are not an authority, so I'm not going to listen to anything you say against authority. That's Stockholm Syndrome, pal. Yeah. That is, that's, that's Stockholm Syndrome, right? That is total institutionalization. So it's really an apologist for the state. Right? It's really an apologist for the state here that you're dealing with. What they're doing is they're resisting people who are finding value in a valueless culture that they created. You, you mentioned this earlier. It's the petri dish from which conspiratorialism arises. Is toxic, is foul, is vapid, is contradictory, and is ultimately valueless. So what a conspiratorialist is doing is seeking now to find a new set of values that religion did not supply because it's a bunch of mind control and that the Orwellian educational systems do not su supply. And these guys don't like it. They don't like you seeking out values on your own, ones that are really unique. And they're trying to say that it's bad. And the only way they can say it's bad for you to do that is because you're now a threat to the state. Right? You're skeptical of those in power. You're fucking right, I'm skeptical of those in power. You're fucking insane to not be. But these are apologists, so you can see their apology here. Her meaning, this was written by a woman. right? She says, she's basically saying, never be skeptical of those in power. That's what's being said in that statement. Never be skeptical of those in power. I don't know what oh, right? I won't be then? <laughs> Let them go on undermining the whole of America and undermining me. I won't say a word and, uh, you know, I'll go, I'll go to the slaughter without a murmur. The military industrial complex, the CEOs of four of the five biggest defense contractors are in fact women. Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin, General Dynamics, and Boeing's defense wing. There's also America's lead weapons negotiator, the Under Secretary of State for Energy for Nuclear Security. Also a woman, she runs the world's largest nuclear stockpile. You're watching Velshian Rule. Women, 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 women. It seems that the whole human race is a bunch of worker ants. They're just on their knees. That, that might be something you didn't notice about yourself, but you did notice it when you scanned political history or world history, these oligarchs, you know, whatever way you want to express it, mindlessly working, not for his own benefit, the thousands of hours that he slaves, the thousands of dollars that he makes, and he doesn't see the benefit of it either in leisure time necessarily or in, in, in capital, right? Right? That's what this process is all about. Once you are the person who can see, once you, like, the, you know, that they live, Put the bloody glasses on. Well, the fight scene and that goes on for hours. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because it, that, that is the big problem of our world. Yeah. How do I get this idiot to put these fucking glasses on, right? Well, you're gonna have to beat him to death. And, and in a way, that's what we're doing. You need to completely keep, you know, every time they turn on the screen, there you are. And they go, Tassarin, go away, go away, right? We do not want to know. Every, and, you know, I'm just gonna go, no, I'll be turning up in your nightmares, right? There I am. <laughs> You have to, just, you know, it's like, knock, 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 the pest, you know, yeah. he's back, shit.
aspect on that because my research has lead me to a more sinister group of people than just your average sort of female psychopath. There's a, I'm talking about a sisterhood here that is a very, very concealed. So much so that as you hinted earlier, nobody's ever picked up on this before. You have to go very, very far down the research of the etymology and the symbolism to even begin sniffing uh, uh, this rap and also because it has been deliberately concealed. And I think that one, to, to finish answering your question, I believe that it, it has not only actively concealed itself, I mean pathologically so, but that the image of the paternalistic, patristic front is part of that concealment. We can get a handle on this. But then, never forgetting that the call goes out to womankind. Modern women, as infected as they are, they must realize that they are the biggest danger to the sisterhood, far exceeding what any man can do. And therefore, the, the, the sisterhood is mostly working on them through Bollywood, through just the whole circus of bull crap that's coming out of their sick minds, right? How they present models of femininity and how, the, unfortunately, the women of today are buying into it. So this is another thing that must always be borne in mind for the bigger bigger picture, the longer journey of history in this matter. The friendship which links us to our great ally, the United States of America, is a powerful element in the defense of peace and will do their utmost to achieve comprehensive disarmament under effective international control. My armed forces will continue to make their contribution for safeguarding of world peace. But we also realize that the authors of history are psychopaths, and they are criminal. So that all criminals want to hide their crime. So when we're looking at history, we're not looking at something that's very honest. We're looking at an incredible tangle, as you said earlier, it's an elaborate. All of this is done because we're dealing with people who very much want their crimes to be forgotten, and they have 100 ways of doing that. One of the ways is to set up a faux uh, criminal, put all the blame onto them, send them running and then all the dogs go after them so that when you're looking in this direction for the, the real criminal and of course this is what we've seen uh, time and time again the real criminal is you know uh, unseen he's invisible you spoke earlier about progress if you really want my honest opinion um, we're not talking about anybody from the normal world having the faintest idea what's going on around them what history is all about or what why they're in the state that they're in the only hope the only hope uh, for anyone to break what has really been going on right across the board, and this includes what's happening now, are the people who happen to be seriously, and I don't mean just frivolously, interested in conspiracy kind of content.
these are archetypes written by sages. These were great, great stories that go back to antiquity about the wild man archetype and what that represents. But how many parents, we talked about this earlier, is, is their child in school being introduced to the wild man archetype? No. Is the girl being introduced to anything except the princess and the pea? Yeah. Fucking archetype? That's about as far as you get. And that's what they're acting like. Yeah. Where's the warrior woman? Where's the woman who knows, hey, did you, oh, I know what you don't know. My parents have told me there's a war between good and evil going on on this planet into which I've been born, right? I'm, I'm choosing sides. Hmm. I don't know what you're talking about. It's like, where, when is the mall open? Yeah. Right? Yeah, all these archetypal things that are going on, which make a man a man and a woman a woman, the masculine and feminine fight, whether it's a racial fight or some other kind of fight, it's going on whether you like it or not. Are you joining the fight? You have, in the end, you're going to be, the sides will be chosen for you or you'll choose it yourself. And so the politics that's coming out of Strasbourg, right, the politics that's coming out of the EU is all this dark feminization. Every civilization was built off the back of a disposable workforce, but I can only make so many. Shh. Happy birthday. Also, globalism is a fulfillment. Globalism to live inside the hive, to live inside an incarcerated Blake 7 hideous, you know, air conditioned dome. Glass buildings, armor, plate, glass to keep you away from nature. It's all rooted in it. And it was the calamity of, this, of the old world order that changed us. We felt like we were cast out of the garden and we were infected with a deep, I mean, a deep non conscious suspicion toward nature. And for those who are already getting what I'm saying, when you see that nature and the self are one, look what, it, look what the implication is. Infection with suspicion towards nature is infection and suspicion towards oneself. Your story isn't over yet. There is still a page left. because we've been living in a world of mirrors in which truth is a lie. You know, the mirror has been, and the mirror movers have been moving things as you walk. It's like a predator who knows how to change its scent. You know, it's like uh, one minute it's standing on two legs, next it's on four legs, next it just disappears and flies away. The predator is able to change its form. It's chameleon-like, and therefore it's very, very hard to follow. And it's the same with our minds. Our minds have got many halls, many mansions, many of them in total ruins. And so it takes a great deal of uh, power, you know, like the hermit in the tarot card, there he is with his lantern, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, but in that light of that lantern, you might not just see beautiful pastures and wonderful utopias laid out. You know, and you might see ruins of unimaginable horror stretching to the horizon. You may see, like what C.S. Lewis pointed out in his magician's nephew, you know, the devastation of entire worlds. And there's the female again. You know? person like me comes along and writes a book on druids and says, hey, it's, you know, Christianity, Judeo-Christianity, Masonry, Templarism, Rosicrucianism, it's all based on ancient druidism, and they laugh at you. Well, I can prove it. And one of the most important um, avenues to this proof is involving this particular vegetal type of symbolism. That's why Yahweh, Jehovah, represents a tree, specifically the yew tree. That's why Moses meets God at a burning bush. Um, that's why all the symbolism, I even have symbolism of the Scottish church, the Church of Scotland literally has a symbol. Uh, their symbol is the burning tree, right? It actually looks like a mushroom, actually. And it's inside right. the vagina-shaped vesica. <laughs> because, again, these potentates and priests of the higher Masonic levels uh, know exactly what we're talking about here that we're trying to reveal. And that is that the female was actually the original oracle. Where did the Duc d'Orléans, one of the most powerful leaders of Freemasonry, Grand Orient Freemasonry, He's co-founder also of the Illuminati. Well, his, his wife was the daughter of a royal figure, Henrietta Maria of France, an incredibly powerful person. He was co-founder of the Illuminati along with people like Baron von Nige, a member of Scottish Rite, oh sorry, the Grand Orient Freemasonry, and also strict observance. 
another Illuminati founder. And she, Henrietta, was connected to all the Catholic nobility throughout the world. Just as Duke d'Orléans was a Templar of strict observance, and she's related to the Stuart monarchy, she actually was involved in the fomenting of three wars with England. That's how powerful she was. But guess what? Maryland is named after her. It's Henrietta Maria of France. And right beside that, Virginia, Francis Bacon, named that after the psychopathic Queen Elizabeth I. One is Catholic on the surface, the other is Protestant on the surface. What's going on here? Well, behind the lodge door, those things mean nothing. These allegiances, they have allegiances that transcend all of that stuff, those lower level rivalries. In the Maya text, the Popol Vuh, we read something absolutely astounding. I've used this quote many times before, but it's always well worth looking at again. It's, it, it's harrowing. Let us make him who shall nourish and sustain us. What shall we do to be invoked and remembered in earth? We've tried with our first preachers, but we could not make them venerate us. So then let us try to make obedient, respectful beings who shall nourish and sustain us. The Sumerian creation epic says, I will create a primitive, man shall be his name, and I will create a primitive worker. He will be charged with service to the gods that they might have their ease. We have built a new boat, and with this boat, for the first time, we can go west. So when do we sail? I already told you. I don't want you to come. So many women. Who would have thought? They're as brave as the men. This was going to be the most exciting voyage of our lives. Sometimes they are much braver than the men. a lot of other rubbish that they want to infect the heads of the of the, the guys and the gals you know and that's why at the end we made that call remember to women saying i can only direct you but these are women who is in this gynocracy and so women you women the good women have the tools as women to know how to take them down yeah you know it's wrong symbolism for the man to do it i don't know if you people grasp that but it just is this is the women who need to armor up just like the ancient celtic women used to wear armor and go out there and if you if you've read their exploits it was ferocious, right? Or like the Finnish women in Finland fighting the Soviets. You do not want to fuck with them, right? <laughs> so right, yeah. women have a history of fighting evil that is equal, if not even greater, to man fighting evil, by the way. So there's the criminal history of women, but you study the history of Finland during the Soviet occupation. You thought the 300 Spartans to the Persians was a story worth telling? Anybody heard about the Finnish women? fighting for their land just short time ago. We're talking historically recent times. And there's many other instances of this. So women today need to don that. First, you're the most powerful you know, demographic of people who are spending money on the magazines and on the products and all the rest of it. You have that power already in your hands. You don't have to invent it. You've got it already. You hold the economy of that, uh, you know, 50 to 80% of the economy of America is in the hands of women with credit card spending and product spending and media spending. You already have the power in your hand. And you're going to turn around to the agents of the sister and say, no, we know who you are now. We're not buying into your stuff. And I'm not letting my daughters be polluted with your muck, your atavistic muck. You know, because that's what it is. It's helping to regress an entire nation into this poisonous, stygian, medusan world and where hatred of men. And that's just one part of it. Yeah. Clawing hatred of men with no reason behind it. But that's what the daughters are being taught. An automatic response to not only the malignant men, but also to good men as well. See, so baby gets thrown out with a bath water. And so the man is sort of, this is not his field, this is not his arena of fight. This is one where the woman arms up like you saw in Tolkien, when who, who's the one who actually took down the Lord of the Nazgul, right? Yeah. You think this professor Tolkien was on drugs, he didn't know what he was talking about, right? And she's pointed out as being a daughter of the sword, right? It's like, yeah, well, that's what we're talking about here. You can't be standing on the hill going, oh, hold my baby in my hands and let the guys do it. It's not even their field. There's some combatants here that's not even in the field of the man to do it. It's the wrong symbolism. He's, he, he doesn't have the tools. He's in the dark. It's the woman and her consciousness and her atavistic thinking in a positive way that matches the black sisterhood on the other side. See, so, the, so this program, rather than being any sort of misogynist rant, is actually a call to arms of the, of the warrior female.
Now don't be afraid. I love you. God, I love you. Hi, pumpkin! Such a kidder. Come on, misery! 